Today I'm going to be showing you guys the CD7 Digital Dash from AEM Performance Electronics and how it integrates into our Dune Buggy Mirage build using the Megasquirt 3 ECU. So stick around. The spider is for Widow and obviously we got the channel logo in there. Now, I just received this CD7 in the mail, and I'm going to be taking you guys through the process that I'm taking to install this unit. I really have not done much research or really read any installation documents up until this point. I did that for a reason. I wanted to show you guys the actual process that I'm taking to install this CD7 into the dune buggy, and exactly how easy it is or is not to integrate into the system using the Megasquirt 3. On the main connector, there's this white wire that comes off here that is our power and our ground. Now if you were running the AM Infinity system I would imagine that this would have four wires this particular connector they would send with you would have four wires and then that would just get wired in and plugged right into your AM Infinity system but because I'm using the Mega Squirt I am going to be using the other set of cans which is this can 2. The gray set of wires with the black and the white. So for the Mega Squirt, we're going to do this connector for the power and the ground, and we're gonna use this gray wire for our can high and our can low. So far, very straightforward. So, first thing we need to do is get this thing powered up so we can actually connect it to our laptop and get our software integrated. So let's go do that. Now, one of the things I really am loving about this CD7 are these rubber offsets that they give you. These are removable, so you can hard mount directly, but I'm gonna use them because that's gonna provide me a little bit of vibration dampening. So I've already pre-drilled my holes here. That's all I've done to this dash. So this is just going to drop into my pre-drilled holes. And this is what I'm seeing from the driver's perspective. Beautiful. And then my connectors come right through the back there. Now for me, I'm just gonna bundle up some of these wires, but I'm glad that they give you the extra wire length if you need it. All right, now I've already got my ground bundle here and I've got my power bundle here, my 12 volt switched. I'm just gonna cut this guy nice and short. Yeah, they give you a good length of this wire. Got the white wire, my white wire, going to the can high, which I believe is their gray wire. It's uh, plus, so we should we should have power at this point. All right, success. Now, one thing I have done is I have downloaded and installed their Dash Design. So you go to AM's website, you download their program. I believe that it is for. Windows only. I did not see anything for Mac, which is usually what I use to tune, but that's okay. We'll use the PC today. Okay, so once you open your Dash Designs, you're going to go to File. You'll go to Open Setup under File. Then down here under Dash Designs, there's Setups. And then you'll have three, I guess, App Specific, Generic, and Screens. So in my case with the Mega Squirt, I'm going to go to app specific. Now we've got a couple options here. We've got this Megasquirt underscore dash file and we've got a Megasquirt underscore real time file. I'm going to try this Megasquirt dash. I can always change this if I need to. So I'm going to try the Megasquirt underscore dash. Now I'm going to go to upload to display and here you have a little checkbox. You can make the setup file available for download from the dash. So that would be really helpful if you switch laptops. You've now got the file saved on your digital display for download. And hit upload, erase, log, and continue. Upload setup complete successfully. So let me close this. So I'm not getting any readouts on my CD7. So what I've done is I went into my Mega Squirt. My tuner studio is on my MacBook, so I'm using that to configure the Mega Squirt, and then I'll use that guy to configure the CD7. What I've done is I've transferred Tuner Studio now over to my PC. And so I'm just going to use the one machine and that way I can connect to both the ECU and to the display unit on one computer so it makes it a little less complicated. So let me show you where I'm at with this. So you can see some of these fields are now populated 
uh, coolant temp, engine load, uh, my barometric pressure, AFR, target AFR, those things are now populated. So let me show you what I did to populate those things. I came over here into our CAN bus, and you're going to want to come into your CAN parameters. This is how I have mine set up. So my CAN ID, I'm leaving it zero. Master enable is on. 29 bit mega squirt CAN enable is on. Baud rate, I have set to 500K. Enable PWM polling, I have. I think it came disabled, and I'm leaving it disabled. Enable uh, input port, I have disabled. Enable output port, I have disabled. And then ADC polling, I have disabled. And these other fields here are also disabled. The main thing here, I think the only thing you'll need to change in your Megasport is this master enable. You want to turn that to on. You want to burn it to the device. Close that screen. Then we're going to go to CAN Broadcasting. You're going to want to enable broadcasting. Here you can set the broadcast interval. I have it set to 250. That's just how it came set, so I'm going to leave it there. And then the rest of these fields I have configured as off right now. Once you've got that turned on, then you come into your, to your real-time data broadcasting, and we're going to want to enable these different fields for your different sensors and what it is that you're broadcasting. So if you go to that first list, just the data broadcasting, and we want to, again, we want to make sure we're enable real-time data broadcasting over CAN. You're going to set that to on. I haven't changed this. This is what this was set to. 1520 is the identifier. Now, because your RPM updates very rapidly, you're probably going to want to leave that high. So I have that set to 20 hertz, so it can update very quickly. And then basically, we're just going to go down each one of these fields here, and we're going to set these where we want them. Now, these are our other sensors. This is our map sensor, coolant temperature, barometric pressure. I'm going to set most of these fields to 5 hertz. They're going to update a little bit slower, but that's probably a good idea so we don't jam up the communications line. So now you can see we have fields that are populated. The engine's obviously off, so no RPM, throttle position, intake. And then of course, we're gonna configure the dash later, but at least we now know that this is now reading the information that our mega squirt is sending. We're gonna do the rest of the configuration with the dash and the setup for the dash we'll do directly connected to the dash. And in fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. So we'll go into our dash design program here. I did a little playing around with this and I loaded a couple extra screens that I liked and I'm gonna upload them to my dash. I'll show you guys how to do that separately, but let me show you how this connects and uploads first. So just the same way that we did this previously, I'm just gonna go to file, I'm gonna go to upload to display, Okay, so it looks like our upload was successful there. That's what it'll look like when it passes. Now, here's what I wanted to show you. One of the things that I did was I designed a new splash screen for this. So let's see if it came through. It should be pretty cool if it works. Yes, sir. Okay, so now we've got the new screen layouts that I just programmed. I have that one. I got this one. This one where I've just got some readouts available to me. I've got to program a few things in here still. And then this is like for data logging and lap times. Yes, <laughs> it worked. Look at that. Check this out. I gotta show this to you again. Look at this startup screen. Look in the down corner here. You can see there's a little black widow for widow. <laughs> That is totally rad. So you can configure any one of these screens and then even in the screens, everything in here is configurable. And there's a bunch of screens in there that you can choose from. These are just the ones I initially programmed. So far, I'm really impressed with this dash. So it probably took me an hour not knowing anything about what I'm doing and not having read any literature about what I was doing. Now that you have this video, you know exactly what you need to do if you have a Megasquartz system. The main thing that I was lacking was the fact that you have to use a frequency to which those are updated to. I had them activated, but I had them all set to off. And as soon as I went in there and I put like five hertz for them or 20 hertz, it then started sending data to the digital dash. So it's a couple of weeks later after the last piece of this video that I've filmed and 
the buggy's ready to go. Huge thank you to AEM. These guys have some of the best equipment in the business. They provided the CD7 dash for the dune buggy project and to say that I am impressed with this thing is seriously an understatement. There is so much that this dash can do and I have only touched the surface of it. If you'd like to see more technical tutorials on either the CD7, the Mega Squirt system, or just any technical tutorials about how I've got this dune buggy set up, you can send a check to 55. Make sure it's payable to me, Dirt Gear TV. Well, guys, it's actually a lot easier than that. All you have to do is hit that like button on this video. And that's just one small indicator that shows me that you guys are interested in those type of technical topics. I'd be glad to do a full series on how I have my Megasquirt system set up and running this Mitsubishi and do the same thing for the CD7 and show you guys how I configure my screens and all of the behind the scenes technical jargon that goes on that you guys usually don't see on camera. But you do have to let me know what kind of interest is out there and you can do that by hitting that like button. I'm Rick with Dirt Gear TV and I will see you guys in the next one.